So there was a Saudi teenager who was on vacation outside of her country and before returning she locked herself in her hotel room and took to social media claiming that her family abuses her and that she wasn't leaving until basically she was granted asylum. So now she's in Canada, she's broken from her country, from her family, she's free to do whatever she wants basically and the, the story has gone viral. And I've read many different articles, I've watched certain interviews with her, certain things she's written, and I just wanted to share some of my thoughts because the way this is being portrayed in Western media is extremely biased. The media is very heavily reliant on the fact that most people in the West, they've never been to Saudi Arabia, they're never going to go to Saudi Arabia. So all that they know about the country is what the media feeds them. So the media is definitely taking advantage of this to feed the people a certain agenda. Now the first thing I want to mention is I've had the opportunity to live in Saudi Arabia for the past eight years on a student visa. I was also born and raised in America. So I know what it's like to live for an extensive period of time in both societies. And the first thing I want to point out is this narrative that Saudi Arabia is some sort of huge prison where the people are oppressed and particularly the women they just want to break free this is truly absurd okay I'm not saying that that doesn't exist obviously it does because this individual wanted to break free but one thing people need to understand is that Saudi Arabia is one of the most sought after countries in the entire world. There is a countless number of people, women included, who would love to trade their citizenship for a Saudi citizenship. And I'm not just talking about people from, you know, poorer countries who are desperate. I'm talking about Western women, Western men, people in Europe in the UK, in Canada, in America, I know them personally. They would love to have the opportunity to attain citizenship in Saudi Arabia. I think a huge disconnect is that people who aren't Muslim and they've always been fed this narrative, they're so used to their own culture, they've never been to a place like Saudi Arabia, they've never believed in something like Islam or understood it, they can't even fathom that Women want to wear the hijab and the niqab. Women want to cover themselves. Obviously not all women do, but women who believe in Islam, women who perhaps they just have a, a higher sense of modesty, they want to cover themselves. A lot of people in the West, they can't seem to fathom this, which is very disturbing. It shouldn't be that hard to fathom. You know, we've recently seen the Me Too movement I remember years back there was a woman walking around New York City and men the entire time were saying things to her that were inappropriate, catcalling. It shouldn't be that hard to fathom that there are women who want to cover themselves. And particularly if you're a Muslim woman in Saudi Arabia, you're free to do that. You're not going to be bothered. Whereas in a place like America, perhaps Canada and Europe, I mean there are certain countries who have outlawed the niqab. They've outlawed the hijab in certain places. Certain women, they feel unsafe when they go out covering like that. So yes, there are women who want to live that sort of lifestyle. Another thing, yeah, there are people who perhaps they want to eat pork. They want to eat bacon. They want to drink alcohol. Well, if you're not of those people, if you're a practicing Muslim, you would love to live in a country where all of the food is halal. You don't have to worry about, hey, is there pork in this sauce? Was this animal slaughtered according to Islamic guidelines? The entire country, all the food is halal. You don't have to worry about people drinking alcohol, getting drunk. You don't have to worry about the huge drug problems that we have in so many places in the West. You can pray five times a day easily. Everybody's praying five times a day. They do the call to prayer. They shut the businesses down. Everybody prays. There's a mosque on every corner. We would love to raise our kids in Saudi Arabia, especially women. They love the fact that there are Quran schools all over the country, that the kids are taught from a young age Islamic values. 
that they learn Arabic, the, the language of the Quran. Many people would love to get citizenship and live this sort of a lifestyle in Saudi Arabia. I understand if you're not a Muslim, it probably doesn't appeal to you. But if you are a Muslim, it's not only absurd to think that it's oppressive to live here, but rather people would love to live here. So I just wanted to point that out to get rid of this idea that nobody wants to go to Saudi Arabia, everybody's trying to flee from it, it's like a prison. That couldn't be further from the truth. However, yeah, there are certain people who want to leave. So let's get back to the story and see what was it that made this particular Saudi teenage girl want to flee the country. Now, if you read her statement, she says, I quote, I was not treated respectfully by my family, and I was not allowed to be myself and who I want to be. As you know, in Saudi Arabia, this is the case for all Saudi women, except for those that are fortunate enough to have understanding parents. She goes on to say in a CBC interview, we mostly take instructions from our parents, what we should do, what we should not do, and the things that we deviate from, we get punished. The interviewer later says, many people as well are saying that you are not telling the truth, that things aren't as bad as you say in Saudi Arabia. What do you say to people who are attacking you now? I mean, it's interesting that the interviewer says attacking. So anybody who thinks that she's not being honest regarding how Saudi Arabia is, that she's saying that it's way worse than it actually is, that they're attacking her, that's clear media bias. But anyway, so this 18-year-old Saudi teenager, she replies, these people, maybe their families are more understanding and they don't know what it's like. So clearly from the things I've mentioned, there's a stipulation when she talks about how bad Saudi Arabia is. And it's always regarding the parents. She says, if people have understanding parents, then they don't have a tough situation like me. These people who disagree with me, maybe they have good understanding parents. Clearly, her main issue is with her parents. It's with her family. She says this numerous times. But how does the media portray it? What does BBC title their article? Saudi teen says women treated like slaves. So the media, they're having a field day with this. It's an opportunity for them to try to make Saudi Arabia and Muslims in general look like they're abusive towards women, they're oppressive, they're backwards. And it also gives them an opportunity in the, in the West to act like this is the land of the free. We know how to treat women. We saved this girl. So what now? So this girl, her life is perfect now. You have uh, other articles that says, Saudi teen granted asylum enjoys a glass of red wine and a rolled up cigarette in cannabis friendly Canada. As she continues to enjoy her new freedoms a day after feasting on bacon. And they show her, they say that she's on Snapchat sharing photos of her drinking red wine, smoking uh, a rolled cigarette, which they're alluding to could be marijuana. They're talking about how she's going out, um, showing her legs. She's obviously not wearing hijab anymore. And she posted a picture of uh, Canadian bacon. It's a bunch of uh, ham with eggs. So the media is having a field day with it. But when I analyze it, I look at the different articles. I hear what uh, this individual herself said. It, it just seems really sad because she's only 18 years old. She seems like somebody who... She's just a kid. She wants to do whatever she wants. She doesn't like her family telling her what to do. I mean, she's obviously been influenced by the West, whether it be movies or whatever the case may be, because she, she keeps alluding to living this independent, normal life. And it's like the first thing she does is she just, it's like she's just rebelling. She's, I mean, if you're really fleeing from your abusive family, what does that have to do with you eating pork? and smoking marijuana and drinking alcohol and showing your legs and taking off your hijab. But the media is eating this up. And like I said, it's sad because she's 18. I know me, I'm a completely different person. Just about everything I used to do and think when I was 18, I disagree with now. And I was a rebellious child to an extent, 
There was lots of things my parents used to tell me that I thought they didn't know what they were talking about. I wanted to do the opposite. But now that I'm an adult, I'm older, I'm wiser, I know that my parents were correct. I was wrong. I was caught up in the world around me and movies and music and thinking that life is supposed to be this certain way and I should be able to do this and then do whatever I want. When I look back, I know now my parents were right. I didn't know what I was talking about and I highly regret so much of what I did and if I could go back in time I would do things completely different so now she's this 18 year old girl she doesn't even speak English she doesn't know the culture there she basically cut ties with her family with her home country and eating pork and drinking alcohol I mean it might be fun for a little bit all of the media attention might be fun for a little bit, but these little friends that she's finding herself surrounded with at the moment, I mean, it's not the same as having family. And if she truly was abused um, by her mother and her brother, as she alleges, I'm not supporting that. I'm not saying it's okay. Um, I don't know if that's actually true or not. But re regardless, I think that the main point is that the media is really having a field day with this. And I just wanted to share some of my thoughts so that perhaps rather than just let the media mislead you and try to force these thoughts into your head, to just open up your mind a little bit, understand that the truth is quite different than what they're trying to portray. I mean, you may agree with it, you may disagree with it, but it's definitely biased and inaccurate the way that they are portraying the situation. Please let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you for watching.